welcome back. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about some cheap and easy things that you can do to make your bag look super professional. Full disclosure, this is my second time recording it because I'm an idiot and I left the reverb on my audio mixer. So I was working on a bag for a Twitch viewer when I realized that there's a lot of things that I do to my bags to give them a little bit of a professional touch. It makes them stand out a tiny bit from the other bags that are on the market and kind of mimics things that top designers will do. And I don't mean like, you know, other indie designers. I mean like Coach, <laughs> for example. So one of the things that's really popular now, and I can totally understand why and get on board, are zipper covers, plackets, whatever you want to call them. So these little guys here are fantastic. You cut them out from an accent fabric, preferably vinyl, so you don't have to worry about uh, raw edges kind of rubbing up or trying to finish those edges yourself. Um, and it's much easier if you have a, like an SVG cutter, like a brother scan and cut, Cricut, Silhouette, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm an idiot and I sold mine before I left Texas. <laughs> so I cut this out by hand. So um, I used, I used um, a very small rotary cutter. I have a really small one um, that Martelli had given me um, and I love it, it's awesome. Information forthcoming on that. And I used an X-Acto knife because getting the outside is pretty easy. It's when you have to go and cut the section for the zipper that's a little hairy. Um, I have a completely separate video that I'm gonna be putting together on how to do this technique because this is a whole thing all in of itself. Um, but the zipper plackets, definitely cool. And the funny thing is, it's actually easier to do this route than it is to do a traditional welt pocket and constantly sit there and wonder if your corner's gonna look pinched, if you trimmed enough, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I actually enjoy this method so much more. Um, it's very clean and I just, I love it. It just looks so neat and it makes it stand out. Um, and it's okay when you can't use tons and tons of custom fabric um, and you go and you add a little accent to it, it really makes it stand out. The other thing is top stitching. Top stitching is always super functional. It's like, especially in long zippers, it's to keep the lining or the exterior fabric from rolling into the zipper, making people mad and start cussing out your bag when they open or close it because the lining gets stuck, you know, those things, little things. But sometimes it can be decorative. Sometimes you can give it a leather look. Let it focus. Oh, look at the bottom of that bag there. Yeah, yeah, it's hot. Yeah, so you can do this kind of top stitching on either side of a seam, like at the bottom here, to add a little bit of a touch. Now, it can be argued that that kind of seam is functional because it's ensuring that the bottom of the bag doesn't kind of like floof right there at the bottom. Um, but you don't always have to do that. Sometimes people roll their seams and other times just the, just the stitching um, for the front or the back of this type of gusset is gonna keep it laying flat. But when you add the stitching like that, it's awesome. The other thing to remember is top stitching, again, while functional, can also be decorative. And you should use a longer stitch length. I actually use 4.5 millimeters on that stitch so that I can make it stand out. And I'm also using variegated thread, so it helps kind of distribute the colors more. Um, and uh, yeah, it doesn't look too like, ah, in your face. So <laughs> that's what I typically do for my top stitching. And that's a little touch, a cheap touch that just costs you time. Um, and, uh, you know, and while we're here, I'm just gonna call out the obvious. Yeah, I have metal bag tags and I also have branded zippers, little zipper pulls. That stuff, that, that's great. And that does add like a professional level to the bag, but that's taking it over like level 9,000. And you don't need that in the very beginning of your bag business unless you really wanna invest, okay? Um, the point of this video is to give you low cost, low time options to up the quality of your bags and make them look professional. You don't have to have the fancy tags because I can tell you right now that mess when I did it cost like 300 something dollars and that's just not accessible for everyone. If you want bag tags um, then uh, or even custom zippers 
but mostly the bag tags. You can get them in leather, cork, fabric, acrylic, and wood. And there's tons of people who are available who have laser cutters, who have businesses all over Etsy or eBay, where you can get your own done and in smaller quantities that are probably more aligned to your needs. So if that's a step you wanna take, go take a peek at Etsy because that's actually a pretty good way to get custom bag tags that aren't gonna cost you an arm and a leg and have like 500 piece minimum order quantities like I had to deal with. So next, moving right along because I'm used to like a more live format instead of, you know, panel shifting and all that. Purse feet. And I don't mean the super expensive, it cost a buck each to screw onto a bag kind of thing. And then you're like sitting here going, I gotta charge four bucks more for the bag because of the hardware costs. I'm talking about these little guys that look like jellyfish. These little guys right here are perfectly fine. You don't need to get super duper fancy with purse feet. You wanna know why? Because they're just gonna sit on the floor. That's their purpose, is to, is to elevate the bottom of a big bag, like a tote bag, off of a dirty floor. <laughs> so it's like, why, why would you spend a buck or two per purse foot in order to, to do that? Like it's function, like eh. So uh, some people may, may go, well kittens, if they spin. I'm like, yes, they do. If you don't flatten the feet, and give some stabilizer, just like you would do with a magnetic clasp, and then top it with duct tape. Da, 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 da. You can also glue it on the underside, not on the side that's on the right side of the fabric that's touching your good fabric. That's not gonna work, but if you glued it um, on the, the, under, the wrong side of the fabric, English is my first language, <laughs> it's Monday, give me a break. So, um, I, I tend to use duct tape, it's just fine. And it actually has the added benefit of not allowing the little feet to kind of eat through your lining fabric, which isn't so much an issue if you're using waterproof canvas with PVC backing, but if you're using anything like nylon or cotton, then you probably want to use a little bit of duct tape. So there's one thing. Another thing that I like to do, if I have uh, if I've put like a little helper D-ring on the side of a bag, now on this one I didn't do it because I am testing this pattern, which by the way, if anybody's curious, it's the Magali by I Think So, and I've basically modified it until it's no longer the Magali, but that's what it is, is the base pattern. Um, but you could add a little D-ring on the side of the bag or somewhere under the front, like here, underneath like the zipper placket, so that you can add a little bit of a keychain with a hook. So I buy these keychain hook sets off of Amazon. Ugh, focus. Blech. So I buy these things so that people can then hook little things like their keys, for example. They can hook their keys on this, hand sanitizer, charms. Like I actually bought these to make bag charms for anybody who may recognize um, like the little keychain and chain set here. Um, but you don't have to do it that way. Um, but this, these things are great if you wanna add a little something to the bag that looks like it has a purpose. Um, and I don't know, add, add, it adds a little bit of functionality to the bag and lifts up the value of it. Um, the final suggestion that I have is tassels. And if you're like me and you don't wanna spend lots and lots of money on tassel hardware, meaning the little caps and then regret your lack of a Cricut and hand cut out tassels to roll and glue into these things, then you can buy tiny tassels, the tiniest of tassels off of Amazon in bulk. And I love these things and they're awesome. And I basically just pick whatever matches the bag of the time or at the time and I'll add it, I'll just add it to the zipper now, I didn't on this bag because I used my branded zipper pulls and um, they, don't have, they don't have holes because I'm SMRT, everybody. I totally forgot to ask for holes in them. Um, but usually when I order zipper tape, I will get an entire bag of zipper pulls. And those default zipper pulls 
which you can buy off of Amazon on their own. You don't have to buy the zipper tape, but these actually have da -da, these little guys here. And I use a pretty strong ring. So I use jump rings to attach them and I enclose them double. So you can get like double jump rings. And then when you pull, it's not gonna like basically open up the ring like it would if you had your toddler grab your necklace, not that you're bitter or anything. Uh, so those are just some of the quick things that I suggest um, that you can do. They're, they're quick, they're easy, they're cheap. You know, none of this stuff is gonna break the bank. The only thing that would break the bank is if you tried to do like the metal bag tag route, um, which again, like, yeah, that's gonna, that's gonna be professional. That right there, adding branding to your product is, is a business decision that again is like a completely separate topic, um, but also wildly expensive and not as accessible. So these other little touches that you can do are great for like getting started and building your bag business. Go with that, it's easy. Anyway, I hope this helped you. Thank you so much.